Welcome to the Texas Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Anna and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Take it awesome. away. Thank you so much. Let me get my screen share going here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Perfect. So you should all, let's see. Can you all see my presentation? Perfect. So my name is Patrick Dean. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at WPI. Thank you so much for taking time out of day to learn a little bit more about us and all these other universities here. So first, here's a little bit about us by the numbers. Founded back in 1865, and right below us, you can see what our student population looks like. So we have just about 4,700 undergraduate students on campus, making us a good medium to small university. We have over 50 undergraduate programs that students can choose from throughout, our time, throughout their time here at WPI. And about 20% of our students enroll completely undecided. We have over 14 different types of engineering that students choose from, which makes up probably our most popular majors on campus. And we also have students going into the sciences, business, computer sciences, and the arts and humanities as well. We're able to maintain a student faculty ratio of 13 to 1, and are able to have our students do accelerated master's programs through our WPI plan. So the WPI plan really focuses on helping students take charge of their education. So first things first, we don't have semesters, we have terms. So we have A term, B term, C term, D term. They last seven weeks, and you take three classes during that time. What's great about that is you only have to focus on three classes during those seven weeks and you meet almost every single day. So you get to do a great deep dive into each of those courses. On top of that, we have a non-punitive grading policy here at WPI. So you can only get it A, B, or C. Anything lower than that's an NR or no record. So it doesn't show up on your transcript at all. It's almost like you never took the class because here at WPI, we focus on cooperation instead of competition. And we really want you to focus on the projects that you'll be doing out here during your time at WPI. That being said, you can't NR your way through WPI. You absolutely have to pass your classes. You have four NRs built into your time here at WPI. Many students pass those anyways and use those to pursue accelerated master's programs. And we have a very flexible curriculum. So we advise, but at the end of the day, you decide. So you can choose what path you wanna follow and we have no prerequisites for any of our classes. And we're very project-based. The two main ones that I like to talk about are the IQP and the MQP. I'll talk about the MQP first. That's your major qualifying project. This is what you do during your senior year as a capstone project. Two of my biomedical engineering students right now are creating, one of them is doing a non-invasive testing process for endometriosis, and she's working on the invention right now. And another student is working on fitting uh, lasers to the tips of endoscopes to help fight thyroid cancer tumors. So they're two great projects that students are working on. And I know another one of our students is working on turning spinach leaves into beating hearts. And some of our structural and architectural engineering majors are working on creating self-healing concrete. So great projects that all of our students work on. And it really goes to show that we focus more on projects and creating instead of just sitting down in class and taking a test at the end of the day. During your junior year, you do an IQP. 90% of our students do their IQP or interactive qualifying project off campus at one of our 50 research uh, centers that we have all over the globe. So you can go to Venice, Italy and develop systems to monitor the canal flow. You can go to Cape Town, South Africa and develop sustainable lighting fixtures for houses that don't have electricity. And you can go down to Melbourne, Australia and work on environmental protection around there and helping fight wildfires. Or if you wanna stay stateside, you can go up to Bar Harbor, Maine, for example, and you can work on preserving the night sky of Acadia National Park. This is an entire term of your junior year. So a full seven weeks and you're not taking any classes during that time. So let you do a great deep dive into that project. And every single student coming into the university right now is guaranteed a global, a global scholarship to make this affordable and make this doable for every student on campus. And really this creates a great formula for success with over 450 companies coming to our campus every single year. And I can guarantee you when they come to campus, they're gonna ask you, what did you do for your IQP? And what are you working on for your MQP right now? Because they know WPI and they know the WPI plan. So you can really set yourself up for success when you go to your career, when you go to our career fairs on campus to really help you succeed there. 
Our students get uh, paid internships and co-ops available as starting as early as their start, uh, first year in some cases. And we have a great career development center that helps students out with this. Um, and right now our average starting salary, you can see right below, it's about 30% higher than the national average currently. Now I talked a lot about uh, academics, but campus life is also very important too and an important part of the college application process. So we do guarantee first year housing only. After that, it is not guaranteed, but still available. Although being in the city of Worcester, it's very easy for students to gain off campus housing. And we have over 235 clubs and organizations on campus from culturally based organizations to professionally based organizations to just some fun clubs. Like we have two cheese clubs on campus, one for tasting, one for making. And we have a lettuce club on campus too. So students get together every term, see who can eat a head of lettuce the fastest and whoever wins becomes president of the lettuce club now. And very close to my heart, we have an underwater hockey team on campus, which is not so fun to watch because they're all underwater, but very, very fun to play. And we're located right in the middle of Worcester, Massachusetts. We're actually a campus on a hill surrounded by all of these brick buildings over there with downtown Worcester in the background. It gets you everything in a small New England city can give you with great restaurants downtown, easy access to New York City if you want to get down there by taking the train or out to Boston. And we have great access to beaches in the summer, skiing in the winter. And it's a great college town with over 34,000 college students and 11 other universities in the area. Here's a little bit about our application deadlines you can find right here. We have early decision, early action, and regular decision. Remember, early decision is a binding agreement with the university. We need the common application, high school transcript, two letters of recommendation, and pre-calculus -re -pre is a prerequisite for us because the lowest form of math we have is calculus. We are completely test blind. We do not take into consideration test scores whatsoever anymore, and there is no application fee for us at WPI. We really look for students who are creative and curious, want to make the world a better place, love math and science, but pursue much more. So that's why we got eliminated, we eliminated the test because we focus on these more. Average class rank of 9% and average GPA of 3.92. Please take those numbers with a grain of salt. And you can find some financial aid information right over here with our tuition and room and board. And we require the FAFSA and CSS profile. That pretty much wraps up everything for me about WPI. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to answering questions at the end. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from the United States Naval Academy. Hey everyone, good evening. My name is Lieutenant Brittany Leonard. I am the admissions counselor for the whole state of Texas. Um, we're gonna go through some quick, awesome pictures, but to start out with, who are we? So by the numbers, the Naval Academy has a very small student to faculty ratio, about eight to one. We have a 90% graduation rate, no tuition cost for the entire four years that you're there, a 100% post-graduation employment rate, and 26 academic majors to choose from. We call our campus The Yard, and they're lo we're located in Annapolis, Maryland. That, that's about 25 miles between Baltimore and Washington, DC. And we call our student body the brigade, and each individual student is called a midshipman. They're representative of all 50 states, territories, and even some foreign countries. So while you're there, you're gonna see a lot of diverse and cultural heritages, sailors and Marines, leaders, academic scholars, um, and a lot of varsity athletes as well. These numbers are a little bit different now. We are at 29% women, 71% men, with about 4,400 students total at the college. And then on the yard with all the services and facilities, we have anything you can think of. The 22 world-class athletic facilities, medical, dental, optometry offices, laundry, the midshipman store is like a uniform store and a Target and a coffee shop all rolled up into one. So what do we offer? We have a world-class education where you graduate with a four-year degree with a Bachelor of Science in whatever you choose to study, a full-ride scholarship with tuition, room, board, meals, medical, and dental all covered. We also issue you laptops, books, and any additional learning materials, whatever you need to make you successful while you're in class. We also pay you each month. You're only going to see about $125 each semester, but that's a pretty good coffee fund. Um, I'm sorry, each month as a freshman, that's a pretty good coffee fund. And then it goes up to about $500 a month as a senior. So you're still gonna get a little bit of money along with this awesome education and all of these um, scholarships embedded. Lastly, you're gonna graduate and have a career after you graduate. So each summer, we're gonna have some kind of training exposure for you. That's going to lead you into kind of your decision on what you want to do when you go into the Navy or the Marine Corps. You do commission as an officer and there is a minimum of a five-year service commitment, but there are several different options you can go into. You can go into the Marine Corps, about 25% of the class um, chooses that. You can go into the surface warfare community where you drive big ships around, you take Marines and aviation 
equipment and um, aircraft to various parts of the world. You can go into aviation where you're either a pilot and you fly the aircraft, or you can be a naval flight officer where you um, where you are um, running the weapon systems and running the um, radar systems. You can also go on to a special warfare, or you can go into being um, a submarine officer where you go to naval power, uh, naval nuclear power school, learn how to operate the power plant, and then you go on to the submarine after that. This is a listing of our 26 academic majors. We have various tracks within majors. We have applied mathematics or we have applied physics. Anything you see with the star means we have an honors program associated and we have seven minors to choose from as well. We have 33 teams that compete at the NCAA Division 1A level. So that's in the Patriot League. You're gonna play schools, um, some smaller schools all across Texas. We have 18 club level teams and they're still competitive. They still travel. They just don't have to follow the NCAA rules. And then for those that are not playing varsity or club level sports, we have intramurals where you just play against your classmates and you vote on which game and um, sport you play each semester. So what's the application process? It is long, it is arduous, but that's what I'm here for to kind of help you out. So it starts with a preliminary application and once you're deemed a candidate, then it goes into the personal data record, which is who are you and your personal statement. Why do you wanna go into the Navy and what draws you to the Naval Academy itself? Then you have to do a candidate fitness assessment, list your extracurricular activities that must be validated by a counselor, um, your academic information assessment, which is basically where your counselor can upload your high school transcripts and then talk about how your school does things. Every school does a little bit differently with the GPA, uh, whether they rank students and the, the number of students that go on to four year or two year institutions. So that's kind of how we compare you against the school not you against everybody else. We also need an English and a math evaluation from your junior or your senior year teacher. And that's gonna evaluate whether you're capable of taking the rigorous classes we have um, and making sure that you're um, okay with calculus and you're okay with college level writing. And then the last part was the, of the application itself is going to be the ex blue and gold officer interview, excuse me, where we have a local trained representative who just talks about who you are in this application. This is the way, this is the subjective portion of that application. And then we also need your official SAT and ACT scores. There is no application fee to apply. And at the very bottom, you can see in gold, there's a nomination application. So everyone has to have a nomination in order to attend the Naval Academy. And that is requirement for all service academies, actually. You typically qualify for at least the vice president, both of your state senators, and then your local representative as well. Those applications are entirely separate and due at different times. Our application, the last day to open one this for this year is December 31st. And the last day to turn things in is January 31st of this year. So some general advice we have for admissions. We're looking for a strong foundation in math and science. We want you to get to pre-calculus, calculus if you can, and taking chemistry and physics because you will be taking those classes no matter what major you choose. We have no minimum GPA and there's no minimum SAT and ACT scores. We just ask that you send us all of them so we can super score. We're looking for AP and honors courses, but we also want you to be well-rounded, so don't overload yourself. We're looking for future leaders. And if you guys have any questions, I look forward to the Q&A. That is all that I have. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from SUNY Maritime College. Hi, I'm Dana. I'm from SUNY Maritime College. I'm here to uh, talk to you about what we have to offer. We're located in the Bronx, New York. That's part of New York City. Here you'll see the Throgs Neck Bridge, and this is our campus right here. Uh, we have a small student to faculty ratio, uh, and we have five ABET accredited engineering programs. Uh, we also have Bachelor of Science programs and a small average class size. Uh, we offer undergraduate programs in engineering and other Bachelor of Science programs. I'll get into those. So in engineering, we offer electrical, facilities, marine, mechanical, and naval architecture. Uh, facilities engineering is kind of like mechanical engineering, but specifically for large buildings that usually have their own uh, power generation. Um, marine engineering is engineering for ships. Uh, and naval architecture is designing ships. 
All right. Um, our Bachelor of Science programs include International Transportation and Trade. That's our global business major. Marine Environmental Science. You can either go uh, the marine biology route or you can do meteorology and oceanography. Uh, marine operations and marine transportation are very similar, um, but they focus on the business of shipping. Uh, and maritime studies is our humanities major. We also have associate's degrees uh, in maritime technology, um, and I will explain the deck and engine license options. We have master's programs as well, and students can fast track into them. Professional experiences include US Coast Guard licenses. Uh, at our school, you're not joining the Coast Guard when you graduate. Instead, the Coast Guard issues you a license so that you can work uh, on any commercial vessel, anything from the shipping industry to the cruise line industry, charters, et cetera. Um, so the deck license is about navigation. Uh, you can work your way up to ship captain. The engine license is to work in the engine room of a ship. Oftentimes you have to do repairs on the fly. Uh, and that's what our engineers do down in the engine room, keep everything in motion. Uh, and our professional internship option is a third option we have. If you don't wanna go the US Coast Guard license route, you can do a summer internship instead but all of our students graduate with professional experience. If you want to do, do the Coast Guard license, you have to be part of the Regiment of Cadets, but you can also join the Regiment if you're an intern student as well and just want that lifestyle. Uh, it's very disciplined, uh, very like military-esque, but there's no military requirement here at Maritime. Uh, Non-regimental students, we call them civilian students. Picture a normal college student, no uniform, you know, that type of thing. All right, so in our programs, certain majors, you have to have a license uh, component to participate, such as marine engineering. You need an engine license uh, program in order to graduate, but other majors, you can have a deck license or an internship instead. Bachelor of Science, similar idea. Uh, marine operations and marine transportation are very focused on the Coast Guard license uh, option. And our associates program, you have to choose either the deck or engine license for the associates program. You're looking at limited tonnage and limited horsepower. So that would be like a local, uh, local shipping career, like tug and barge industry or uh, ferries. All right. Um, our students travel around the world in the summer. Uh, the, only the Coast Guard licensed students, I should specify. Um, but we go to domestic ports and international ports as well. Uh, internships and career placement is where maritime shines. Um, our students often uh, intern in across the country and get jobs across the country, some commission into the Navy. We have an NROTC office on campus. Uh, some of them commission into the Coast Guard and others get local jobs, um, engineering especially. Uh, we have a ton of uh, recruiters that come on campus to interview students. The majority of our students actually have at least one job offer prior to graduating. For the application information, you can do uh, the Common application or the SUNY application. Uh, our, we have an essay component, high school transcripts, uh, but we are SAT and ACT optional for 2022. Um, and uh, we need one letter of recommendation. For the engineering program, uh, you have to take pre-calculus in high school. Um, that is a hard requirement. Uh, unless your school does not offer it, then please have a conversation with us. Um, and for Bachelor of Science majors, there is no specific math requirement. For any major, though, we do like to see a good challenging course load in your senior year. Uh, we also have an education opportunity program that is for New York State residents. Uh, we have scholarships available. Um, again, a lot of the, these are for New York State residents, but we do have some that are open to uh, other students as well. All right, and we also have estimated costs. You'll see out of region costs right there. I will drop my information in the chat. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Stevens Institute of Technology. Okay, hi, my name is Miranda Malakis. I am the admissions counselor for all of Texas uh, here at Stevens Institute of Technology. So Stevens is a technological research university located in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, this is kind of a shot of campus behind me. Uh, we are a smaller size institution with roughly around 3,700 undergraduate students, a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 25. So we are a smaller size institution, but we definitely promote collaboration in the classroom, more one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors as well. Uh, we do keep innovation at the forefront here at Stevens. So we were founded back in 1870 by the Stevens family who were a family of engineers, entrepreneurs, innovators. So we have a lot of really cool research and innovation coming out of Stevens. Uh, we even have had Nobel Prize winners who are alumni as well. Excellence in research. We've maintained two national research centers of excellence on campus. And we are very proud of how well our students do once they walk out of our doors as well, uh, with the average starting salary for the class of 2020 being around $77,000. So we do offer 34 different major options uh, here at Stevens, mostly uh, STEM related majors. So our most popular each year do tend to come from computer science and engineering. Computer science, we offer two different degree options, computer science, more general, and then cybersecurity. Engineering, we offer a bachelor's in engineering program. Um, usually our most popular major tends to be mechanical um, and engineering undecided. So if you're not sure what you like in engineering, but know that you wanna be an engineer, you can come in undecided, take some courses and then figure it out. Um, our engineering degree is also design oriented. So every semester you'll also be taking a design course um, along with the rest of your, your engineering curriculum. We also have some other programs like our School of Business. Uh, with us being literally across the river from Manhattan, um, we have really great opportunities coming out of our School of Business, programs like quantitative finance, combining higher levels of math, uh, finance, as well as computer science. The sciences, popular options here tend to be around pre-medicine. Uh, we have an accelerated pre-med program we do with Rutgers New Jersey School of Medicine. Uh, that, that is a pretty competitive program, but is a fast track to medical school. Three years at Stevens as chemical bio major, four years over at Rutgers uh, to finish off medical school. And we do have some really cool humanities courses as well. Um, so we have some cool ones that combine tech like music and technology and visual arts and technology. All right, student life on campus is also pretty busy. Our students you know, have to get away from the computer sometime. Uh, so we do have performing arts on campus with about 50 performances each year coming from our glee club, acapella, um, concert band, theater, different annual events and traditions like our Tech Fest, which is the concert pictured here that we normally have on campus for students. Over 100 different student organizations ranging from Greek life to cultural organizations, community service, 25 division three athletic teams, as well as club and intramural sports uh, with over 15,000 uh, hours of community service on campus each year. Our location, um, we are located in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is known as like the square mile city. So it's a city campus, a little more urban, but also um, you get the, the chance to live in a, our campus, which is a little more trees, lawns, um, kind of a break from the city there. Uh, but everything's super close and walkable with Manhattan right across the river. Uh, we do guarantee housing all four or five years that you are at Stevens. Um, so we have on-campus residence halls, as well as a leased housing program where we lease out apartments within Hoboken for our students to live in. Professional experiences is also a really big part of being a student student. About 40% of our students take part in an internship. Um, another popular program is our cooperative education program, our co-op open to engineers, computer science majors, where for a full year, they can actually go to work full-time, get a full-time paycheck, um, do multiple experiences there and graduate in about five years, but with only four years worth of actual coursework. Um, because for a whole year, you'll be working full time and not taking classes. So great way to get out into the real world. Uh, research actively happening on campus um, for our students to get involved in, as well as their own senior project um, that is research and based as well. Um, some impressive stats over here, including our 95% um, placement rate within, within six months of graduation. Um, so our students are getting jobs or going into grad school once they leave our doors. 
So applying to Stevens, we are an early decision school at the first um, application deadline coming up in November. Uh, we do two rounds of early decision there. All students are automatically considered for scholarships just by applying to Stevens. So no extra application for you to do scholarships, but some extra um, financially documents fill out for further aid. Uh, on the application, we're looking for you to fill one out. Um, we are a member of the Common App um, with the essay component on the Common App. You'll send over your official transcripts. Uh, we're looking for at least two letters of recommendation, recommending one come from a guidance counselor, one come from a teacher. Uh, for this year, we are going SAT optional for all majors except that accelerated pre-med program. Uh, we're not sure about next year, but at least for seniors this year, you have the choice um, to submit those SAT scores or not. Um, also want to know if we have um, anyone who's like a junior or below, uh, we do have some required courses we're looking for for some of our programs. So definitely would check out our website um, and take a look at those courses that you could take in high school in order to apply to some of our programs. All right, and here's my information. I'll also put it in the chat. Um, I, like I said, I'm the admissions counselor for all of Texas. So feel free to reach out if there's anything I can help you with. Thanks. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Milwaukee School of Engineering. Hi, everybody. While I get my screen up here, uh, my name is Emma Phillips, and I am an admissions counselor at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Does my screen look OK here? Um, you just need to flip yep. your screen. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's what I thought it might be. Yeah, so like I was saying, my name is Emma Phillips. I'm an admissions counselor at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, so just here to tell you a little bit about MSOE today. Um, MSOE, we are located right in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Where is Milwaukee, Wisconsin? It's about um, an hour and a half north of Chicago. You might know Milwaukee right now uh, because we are the recent NBA um, champions. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are so pretty crazy to be in Milwaukee right now. Um, we are located right downtown Milwaukee, actually a block away from where the Bucks do play, uh, but we are a pretty small institution, about 2,500 students here on campus. Um, we are also a pretty specific institution. We have about 13 academic majors here on campus. I'll get to that in a little bit, but we are pretty much a, a STEM-focused school in that way. Um, some things um, to note a little bit about MSOE, um, we have lots of opportunities for students to be involved on campus. So you'll see we have over 20 different NCAA Division III sports, um, pretty much every sport that I can think of. Um, the only big one, we don't have football. Instead of football, we are a hockey school. So that's pretty fun. Students like to go to the hockey games. Um, we have over 90 different clubs and orgs on our campus as well, ranging from Greek life to competition organizations, like you can see in the photo there, to like a weirdly thriving unicycle club. I see unicycling students all over our campus to um, different like painting clubs, different things like that. There's lots of different ways for students to get involved here at MSOE. Um, being downtown Milwaukee, Milwaukee is a really cool city to be a young person and especially a college student. Um, so we do have guaranteed housing for all of our students. Um, we require freshmen and sophomores to live on campus. Juniors and seniors absolutely can. We have housing available, but if you'd prefer to get an apartment with a friend or find some off-campus housing, you're absolutely able to do that as well. The other thing that I do want to know, and again, these are just really general things, I would encourage that you um, check out our website a little bit later, but um, just things for you to know. Every single one of our students um, in coming to MSOE does receive some form of financial aid, um, whether that be a scholarship, whether that be an, be an academic-based scholarship, whether that be a scholarship based on financial need, everybody receives some sort of aid here at MSOE. Um, and you'll kind of see in that little corner, I do like to point out the photo that I have there. That is our campus. So you can kind of see it's beautiful right downtown Milwaukee, five blocks away from Lake Michigan, right on the Milwaukee River, really a fun place for our students. So I did mention that I'm SOE is a little bit specific. So these are all of our majors here on campus, mostly engineering, right? It's in our name, uh, but we also have very strong nursing programs, actuarial science, business, um, computer science as well. I kind of loop computer science into engineering. Um, so some things that are really cool about all of these majors, the reason we have them, you'll hear me talk about it more in just a minute, but the way you get good at all of these programs is practice. So we are a super hands-on school, um, labs and uh, building things and breaking things. That's how um, you get good at these majors. So that's why we have the programs that we have. 
Um, every single program that you'll see here um, is a four-year graduation guarantee program. So um, we're designed for, designed for you to get in and out in four years here. Um, we are also a direct admit program. So what that means, if you get accepted to MSOE, you are also accepted into the computer engineering program or the computer science or the electrical engineering program. So that means day one, you actually get to start with um, classes for your major. So you get to do major classes all four years here at MSOE. A little bit more about the academics at MSOE because I do think that's something that's pretty special to us. Um, we are a uh, nationally ranked engineering institution. Our mechanical engineering program alone is ranked ninth best in the nation. Um, I think the reason that we are nationally ranked is that emphasis to hands-on education. Um, again, like I had mentioned, most of your classes here are going to be hands-on. It's going to be labs. It's going to be building stuff. It's going to be breaking stuff. Um, every student here participates in something called a senior design project. Um, it's like a capstone. So you actually get to make a real project where you might work with a company. Um, you might work independently. So um, that's a really big focus for us here on campus. Um, some other cool things about our academics um, in our labs in those small class sizes that we have here, the only person teaching is going to be your professor. Um, so we don't allow teaching assistants, we don't allow grad assistants, your professor is going to be the one teaching your classes, um, leading your labs, grading your papers. Um, so you get to have a really close relationship with your faculty. Um, we also require that all of our faculty that are teaching those classes to have at least five to 10 years of experience in their field before they come teach here. So your mechanical engineering professors, they've been engineers in the field. They're going to tell you what's what. They're going to tell you what you need to know, what you don't need to know. You're spending all this time to go from uh, to go to school. So we feel like you should learn from the best of the best. And that's going to be our faculty here. Um, a little bit about the admissions process. Um, our application, if you're a senior, now is the perfect time to apply. Um, if you're a junior, fall into winter, that's the best time to apply to MSOE, get it in early. Um, our application's online, it's super easy. It takes maybe like 10 minutes to do. Um, there's no essay, it's completely free as well. So it's basically just getting your information to us. I recommend that you apply by December 1st, even earlier is better. Um, currently, the only thing that we are requiring is a copy of your transcripts, um, so you can send that in to us. Um, we require a 3.0 minimum GPA as well as some form of calculus. You'll also see I'd recommend that you file the FAFSA. Um, most schools will say that as well. And last but not least, if you do have questions, feel free to send us an email. You can email at us, us at explore at msoe.edu. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lastly, you'll be hearing from Lawrence Technological University. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me get to my screen, share my screen with you, sorry. Ah. I've lost my Zoom controls. I don't know what's happening. Okay, here we go. Can everybody see that? It's yes. Loading right now, but I can see that you are screen sharing. Okay. Um, my name is Leslie Keeler. I'm the Texas Regional Admissions Counselor for Lawrence Tech University. Um, my contact information is listed here. My hope is that you will feel comfortable um, contacting me directly if you're interested or have questions. Um, Lawrence Tech is comprised of four colleges, uh, over 100 different majors in colleges of architecture and design, arts and sciences, business and information technology, and engineering. We still not coming up. Do you want to oh, take it down and try it again? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. How about now? Looks good. Okay. So moving right along. Uh, we're in Southfield, Michigan. Southfield is a suburb of Detroit. Um, it's a great area for computer science, architecture, business kinds of jobs, which is important for our students because most of them participate in some kind of internship. We offer a really personalized education through an 11 to 1 student faculty ratio, small classes, um, lots of opportunities for applied learning, uh, including uh, research and labs, 
uh, projects and state-of-the-art labs and studios um, and internships and co-ops. Uh, campus life is very welcoming and comfortable. We have four residence halls, two apartment style, two sort of ultra modern, very cool um, community style. The freshmen stay in our newest uh, residence hall. It has all kinds of lounging areas and common kitchen and all kinds of spaces where you can interact and study and do all kinds of things. Um, even though you're going to feel at home at Lawrence Tech, we do have the excitement of a big university. We are small. We have about 3,000 students, but we also offer um, a full slate of men's and women's athletics. We're NAIA, so that's sort of comp comparable to Division III. Um, and we've also added recently competitive cheer and esports. We also have Greek life and all kinds of student organizations. So there's always something exciting going on. Specifically for our academic programs in the College of Architecture and Design, um, we offer a direct entry five-year master's. Uh, we just graduated the youngest architect in the state of Michigan because we have a program that allows our students to get their internship hours for certification while they're doing their education. Um, we also have a one-of-a-kind programs like game design, transportation design, uh, business and IT. You've got some uh, variety of majors in business administration. We also have information technology and we've, we have a new major in business data analytics. So that's kind of a new area that's coming. Being a technological university, we respond to changing technologies, adding majors, changing curriculum in, at a quick pace. College of Arts and Science is our largest college. This is where our computer science program is housed, all of the natural sciences. Um, if you're pre-med or pre-professional, um, you have the advantage again of state-of-the-art labs and real world research. Um, we've got some new majors. We've added a data science major. We've got some new concentrations in computer science. In addition to game design now, we've got artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. And then finally, um, our nursing program, we just graduated our first um, uh, cadre of nurses and they were working on the front line of COVID. Talk about a, what a time to get your, your nursing degree. Um, and finally, engineering, we are known for engineering. The Lawrence brothers were friends of Henry Ford and they started Lawrence Tech as a mechanical engineering school. That's still what we're really known for and our most popular major, uh, but we're consistently noted as one of the best undergraduate engineering programs in the nation. Uh, in order to apply, we have rolling admissions, so you can apply online. It's a $30 application fee. We need your transcripts and a, a, an essay just so we can kind of get to know you, your writing style, and a little bit about you, why Lawrence Tech might be a good fit for you. Um, and we are optional uh, as far as test scores for um, uh, 2022. Um, as far as your investment is concerned, we break it down by major and include housing in their meal plan. Uh, it's important to note that 97% of our students receive financial aid, and that's just aid, not scholarships. As far as academic scholarships, Texas students receive our National Blue Devil Scholarship, which is $5,000 a year for four years, as well as we offer academic scholarships anywhere from $4,500 to $16,000 a year, very generous scholarships. Then there's athletic scholarships. We've got uh, special ones like FIRST Robotics or um, DECA if you happen to be in those organizations. Um, so again, I would just encourage you to contact me if you have more information. I'm sorry about the snafu at the beginning with the, the slides and everything. I'm not the most technically, <laughs> I'm, I'm a technological uh, admissions counselor with, with challenging technical skills. <laughs> But um, I do encourage you to uh, check out our virtual tour on the website and contact me, uh, check us out, look at all the opportunities that might be available to you at Lawrence Tech. Thanks so much. Thank you. So now I just like to invite everyone on to do a round of Q&A. Um, and I'll just ask everyone to share what advice you would give someone going through the college search process. And you can go in the order you presented in. Yeah, I can start. So for advice for going through the college search process, 
Um, I would say the biggest piece of advice is find your academic fit and most importantly, find your social fit too, because you want to make sure you're going to a campus where you feel comfortable on campus because that's going to make you want to get involved in the area too. So make sure it has your academic fits of your first, second and third major too, and make sure it just creates an environment that you can be comfortable on. So I know it's tough right now, but if you can be able to go out and visit campuses, I definitely recommend being able to do that. I would say it's not necessarily required to know exactly what you want to do, whether it's what you major in, whether it's what you want to do for your first, your second, your fourth job. Just be able to articulate an idea and a direction that you want to go so you can kind of match that with what Patrick said about your social and your academic fit. And then know what the school's requirements are when it comes to changing majors, when it comes to job requirements afterwards. We all, all of us in here are very specific. STEM requirements and then follow on career requirements. So just kind of know a little bit about what you're getting into. So definitely reach out to any admissions counselor at that school to kind of figure out what, what you're getting into. That's some great advice. Um, to add to that, if you're really not sure what you want to do, I suggest exploring different career options around the field that you might be interested in and include the search for that, that lifestyle that you wanna live because different careers tend to have different pay when you graduate. So look at like what a first year person would get paid versus somebody who's mid-career. Um, and that's something that, that maybe you can explore, you know, whether it's a liberal arts school or a STEM school or, or any school. Yeah, my advice is just a little more kind of basic. It's something that I don't think a lot of people realize is just kind of stay organized. The college search process gets overwhelming and stressful and you're probably talking to a bunch of schools and you want to make sure you remember like the things about them. So maybe try to take a few notes, keep track of deadlines, uh, use, a use a planner, even though I know that sounds kind of crazy, but good practice for college. Um, but yeah, keep yourself organized as you go through all these types of college fairs and stuff. Um, deadlines are all over, requirements are all over. So you just wanna keep, your, keep track of everything. I absolutely agree with what everybody has said so far about um, visiting and everything like that. I would also highly encourage you to not be afraid to reach out to the admissions counselors that you're working with. I'm sure that we can all agree, but that is what we are here for. That's our job is to help you through the process. And um, it can be kind of a daunting process. So that's what we're here for. There's no question too small, no question too big. Just don't hesitate to reach out, email, call. Um, we love to hear from you guys. Excellent advice. Um, what I can add, uh, the earlier you start the process, the more choices you're going to have. Uh, and it can seem kind of daunting because there are so many choices. So you have to ask yourself some real tough questions about what you're looking for, um, size, uh, how far away from home, those kinds of things. Um, and I just reiterate that it's, it's always a good idea to reach out to uh, an admissions counselor from wherever you're interested in maybe attending. Great, thank you all so much for sharing and thank you everyone for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions and you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Texas. So thanks again, everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.